One of the wonderful things about mathematics is how it seems to be precisely the right language to describe and understand the world around us. In this series, we'll just see a few instances of how that works, because there's always a math for that. In recent years, variable speed limits have started to appear all over our motorways. They've irritated numerous drivers, so why do people bother? Well, the mathematics of traffic is in fact very complicated, and we're just going to build a very simple model to try and get an insight into the why. That's not inauthentic. Mathematicians always start simple and then build up the complexity as and when they need it. So let's start with a car driving along at speed v, measured in meters per second. I'm going to assume, for our simple model, that cars keep apart at a very safe distance. The braking distance, the distance it will take them to stop. That's a safe way to drive. Let's call that braking distance D. Well, those of you who are preparing for your driving tests will know that D is made up of two distances. The so-called thinking distance, that's the distance it takes you to perceive the danger and react to the danger. Then there's the actual braking distance. That's the distance it takes the car to stop once you've actually applied the brakes. To work out the thinking distance, we simply need to know how much time it takes for you to perceive and react to something. It's called the perception reaction time, and it's roughly speaking a second. Somewhere between half a second and two seconds, depending on various things it is thought. Let's call it one second because things are simple. Now, in one second, how far does the car travel? Well, it's going at V meters per second. So in one second, it travels V meters. What about the braking distance? Well, you might think it works similarly. Notice that with the thinking distance, if you're going twice as fast, then the thinking distance is twice as far. And you might think that same with, the same is true with the braking distance, that if you are going twice as fast, the braking distance is twice as far. But that's not actually true. In fact, twice as fast, the braking distance is four times as far. Three times as fast, the braking distance is nine times as far. It is, in fact, proportional not to the velocity, but to the velocity squared. It's some number times by the velocity squared. And the number that's, that is multiplied by depends on a number of factors, mainly how good your brakes are. In the UK, people estimate this number to be 1 13th, or thereabouts. So this is the distance between one car and the car in front of it. Let's draw him onto our diagram. Distance between the cars. Let's say between the car centers for the sake of ease. I want to work out how many cars go by the motorway per second? At the moment, I've just got a one-lane motorway. So I'm going to stand, say, where this car is currently and count how many cars go past every second. Well, in order to work out how many cars go by per second, I first need to know how long it takes the car behind to catch up to where this car is now. It's got to cover a distance d, and it's going at speed v. So the time to cover that distance d is, well, it's the distance divided by the speed. The distance d divided by the speed v. And we know that d is v plus a thirteenth v squared. That's divided by v to give you 1 plus a thirteenth v. So that is the time it takes for one car to catch up to where the next car was. So let's say it takes five seconds for this car to catch up with this car. Well, every five seconds, one car goes by. Well, the number of cars that goes by per second is then just one-fifth, one-fifth of a car each second. This number is actually 1 plus 13 V. So the number of cars that go by per second is 1 over that number. Let's try and understand what this says. As V increases, if the cars go faster, this number here, the 1 13th V, gets bigger. So the denominator of this fraction gets larger. So you've got 1 divided by a larger and larger number as the speed increases. 1 divided by a large number is a very small number. What that means is large speed, small number of cars for each second. It's easy to see in a graph. So let's put speed on the x-axis and the number of cars per second on the y-axis. As the speed increases, the number of cars per second decreases and gets closer and closer to zero. You can try drawing the graph yourself. It looks something like this. So the graph is saying the faster the cars go, because they have to keep a safe distance away from each other, the fewer cars that you can get through per second. 
Now, you can't go infinitely fast on a motorway. There's a speed limit of 70 miles an hour, which is roughly speaking 30 meters per second. Let's say that's here. 30 meters per second into our formula gives us 30 divided by 13, about 2.5. So 1 divided by about 3.5, which is roughly 0 0.3. So you can get 0.3 cars per second, or three cars every 10 seconds by at that speed. If we reduce the speed to say 50 miles an hour, which is roughly 20 meters per second, let's see what happens. Reduced speed, how many cars per second can you get? Well, 20 over 13 is about one and a half. At the one, two and a half. One divided by two and a half is about 0.4. Well, is 0.4. So lower speeds mean that you can fit more cars on the road. In fact, more cars pass by per second, the lower the speed is. So let's cut to our motorway. And let's say cars are travelling along the motorway at a rate of three cars every 10 seconds, or 0.3 of a car per second. What happens if more cars arrive? That's what happens on the motorway. We have a junction. And say one car every 10 seconds arrives or 0 0.1 car per second. That means that the flow of traffic over here is, has got 0.4 of a cars per second, or four cars every 10 seconds. If you carry on at 70 miles an hour, there's not gonna be enough space to get all those cars through. So there'll be a jam down here with these cars fighting to get onto the road. But if you decrease the speed to 50 miles an hour, that will allow you happily to have the 0.4 cars moving along per second no traffic jam. Clever.